promises are now old hat, and there's a new hotness in town. To understand why the new hotness is what we really want, let's take a look at a little different example, a little more complicated. So let's say now the questions that we are asking are uh, in the form of a decision tree. So the result of one of the questions is going to determine the next question that we ask. Well, now we can't just hard code a single chain of questions because we don't know which ones, like it's all dynamic. All right, so I switched it up, got rid of the progress bar, now it's just a simple text output, and text is the animal, depending on some state here, the output is determined. Looks like ass, but I don't care at this point. Click the button, need to put dot value in here, don't forget the dot value. No data, if we click it, test in progress. Okay, so that makes sense so far. I can actually put the text like right in here, right up in there, and then vcard can just be an empty tag. Now, I kind of like that better. All right, how do we do the decision tree? Well, it's pretty simple, right? Do chili, do you live in water? Then, and it's like, well, if, I guess yes, no, we can just say yes. If yes, return animal.value is equal to fish, else, is equal to bear not finally probably want to reset animal in case it was already set if we catch an error all right so this is like a decision tree of just one question just to get us started it's gonna look like this right do you live in water if then if yes do this if no do that blah 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 test in progress do you live in water yes you are a fish hmm so far so good, try it again. No, you are a bear. But usually in a tree, you want like more than one level. So if you live in water, well then let's do chili. Do you breathe with gills? If no, well then let's ask a different question. Are you a mammal? And of course now we have to do dot then so you can kind of see like what I'm getting at here, right? Like, does this look a little familiar to you? Because it, it do be looking a little bit like the, the goddamn callback hell, right? The, the triangle of terror, the pyramid. But let's, uh, let's give it a shot here. Let's see if it works. All right, do you live in water? Yes. Do you breathe with gills? So it went to no data. That's a problem for a guy like me. Do you breathe with gills? No, you were a dolphin. Okay, that works, but it seems like it executed the finally after the first question, which isn't what we want. So what I'm thinking is maybe if we return do chili, it's gonna return the promise from this one and chain them together. We gotta chain these promises with a return. I just realized since we're setting value animal to null here, we don't have to do it in the catch. Like the cat, we don't actually need a catch. Just a finally is good enough for us. But anyways, all right, test in progress. Do you live in water? Yes. All right, it didn't go to the null state. Do you breathe with gills? Yes. You are a trout. Try again. Do you live in water? Cancel. No data. That's right. Do you live in water? No. Are you a mammal? Cancel. No data. Now this is big. Because what this means is we don't have to copy this finally, you know, at the end of every place in here. We, we only need one finally at the end and it covers all the, the layers inside, all the levels. So that's good. So this is still better than callback hell, but it's starting to get a little decroded. Like I had planned to go down here four levels and show you what it looks like. And I'm like, I don't want to type all that out. That's goddamn annoying. So I think you get the idea at this point. Let me show you what the real shit is. So imagine we got a function here and we give, we put a little, a little sauce on it. Call it async function, ya yeah boy. So we got a little async function boy. And then do it is also gonna be async. Now what the hell does this mean? Well, inside of any async function, you have access to a secret sauce called await. And what await does is it says, okay, these two statements, 
this statement will only be executed after this one is completed without any callbacks. You can just write them, you know, A, B, C, D, like you normally would in synchronous code, and it all happens one after another. Under the hood, when the JavaScript interpreter sees this stuff, this async and bullshit, it's going to hook up the callbacks in such a way that this one happens after this one is completed. And that is really good. That's all you need. Now, here's a funny thing about the function, ya boy. If you mouse over it, you see that the return type is promise void. So async functions all return a promise, and then you await that promise that is returned, meaning that any function that returns a promise is awaitable. So if we make do it async, then we can use await inside. And because do chili returns a promise already, we can await do chili. So what does this happy crappy look like? Well, if we await do chili, do chili returns a promise. When you await the promise, essentially this function will suspend. Conceptually, it will suspend until do chili is finished and there is a value in the promise. Then it will unwrap that value. And so the result of await blah, blah, blah is a bool because this is a promise of bool. So we can just do if await do chili and then we're at our next level. So then we can do if await do chili and ask the second question. And similarly, we do the same on the else side. And we don't need all that happy crappy then and callback functions and other crap. I mean, it still is nested because it is a tree at its essence, but it's a lot cleaner. So here it is. Here's the entire decision tree. Now imagine typing all this out with an MFing promises and you'll realize okay maybe this uh, maybe this async stuff's got some sauce but the one question you might have remaining is okay but what do I do about the catch or the finally I don't have that well that's the beautiful thing async code looks just like normal synchronous code and you do the error handling just like normal synchronous code you could just do a try catch around these and it will catch them asynchronously so I wrap all this up in a try and then I can do finally in progress dot value is equal to false. And there you go. And if we needed to do, you know, a catch, we could just do a catch like you normally do. And it would catch exceptions at any level they happened. There we go. Do you primarily live in water? No. On land, are you a mammal? Yes. Are you commonly kept as a pet? Yes. Are you smaller than a house cat? No. You are a dog. Try again. Yeah, I live in water. Oh, yeah, I breathe with gills. Mm, not salt water. Mm, no, no upstreaming. I'm a trout. I am a beautiful trout. And if you cancel out part way through, you have no data. The finally kicks in. And again, this with promises would be a nightmare. And with just plain callbacks, it would be hell on earth. But with async await, yeah, it's manageable. It's not too bad. So again, what are the steps? Well, you make your API so that your async functions take an accept and a reject function, or a resolve and a reject is, I guess, what it was supposed to be. That's step one. Step two, you wrap that shit in a function that returns a promise. And it wraps pretty nicely if you've made your functions like this. Step three, you make your business functions asynchronous and you await the promises to chain them together and you wrap them in a try catch to handle errors and there you go bob's your uncle it's easy as that now just for shits and giggles let's see what our power level quiz would look like with async and await so again do chili that's the same returns a promise wraps our api we make quest an async function and all this bad boy does says if await do chili on the text we can just use a normal if we don't have to do any funky funky spunky it just look like this actually so this goes into here and then this comes here and you go away and so we just await do chili that becomes the parameter the argument to this ternary to determine what happens what goes into power level dot value. All right, easy enough. Next, 
Now the funny thing about this, this is an async function, but you can still use the promise syntax with it if you wanted, because it still returns a promise. So you could do that, but why would you? Instead, we make the function do it async, then we can just await all these bad boys. And we just treat it like a normal, just normal goddamn synchronous code would look. You put a try, put a catch in that bad boy, and you put a finally. And there you go. Let's just make sure it works. No, yeah. no, yeah. no. Yeah. Cancel. It's beautiful. Works perfect. Exactly the same. Just a little bit, a little bit of more sauce on it. The previous one wasn't too bad, but I still prefer this. And that's it. That is basically all the stuff that I really wanted to go over in this little introduction to uh, Ceph, C++, and TypeScript, and Vue, and all that stuff. You got you got the work. You got the makings here. You can you can make something with Ceph if you wanted to. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And who knows? Maybe maybe in the future I might make some more. I might make some more videos on this. I might make a video that's like, hey. Here's a, here's a fun little app, like an actual app that we could make with Ceph. But no, no big plans to do that now. It's kind of time consuming. But you never know. You never know. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. helps a lot. And I will see you maybe someday again with some more Nano Ceph.